Across Middle-earth's history, there have been many heroes of great renown, who received their rewards in life, or left behind a powerful legacy that was well remembered. But for one reason or another, not all heroes receive the praise they deserve, or at the very least, perhaps they fade into the annals of history faster than others. One such of these heroes was a legendary horseman, a lone survivor who was perhaps responsible for saving all of Gondor. In this video, we talk about Borondir Udolrath, the forgotten hero. In 2509 of the Third Age, Gondor's situation was desperate. The near 400 year long watchful peace had ended in 2460 with Sauron's return to Dol Guldur, and in 2475, the enemy once again burst forth from Mordor, Osgiliath was ruined, and the land of Aphelion became a battleground. Although Gondor was able to drive back the forces of Mordor, it did not come without cost. Steward Boromir, a legendary captain and warrior, sustained a Morgul wound, and it would eventually kill him a mere 12 years into his reign. This left Kirion as the steward, but his job was no easier. Gondor was under assault from both Mordor and the Corsairs, but an even bigger threat was amassing to the north. Centuries earlier, Gondor had fought a long, bloody war against the Wayne Riders, and although Gondor was ultimately victorious, the Northman Kingdom of Ravanion was destroyed, and the Easterlings remained a constant threat beyond the Anduin. After hundreds of years of inactivity, these Easterlings, the descendants of the Wayne Riders, began to reform beyond the undeeps of the Anduin, joined by more of their kinsmen from the east. Although they were relatively poorly equipped, they were numerous and ferocious fighters, and for this reason, they were named the Balkoth, the Horrible Horde. To Kirion, this horrible horde was Gondor's greatest immediate threat. The forts along the Undeeps were undermanned, and the now sparsely populated province of Kalinardon would offer little resistance should an enemy force cross the Anduin. And if an enemy force were to occupy Kalinardon, it would put them beyond Gondor's greatest natural barrier in the Anduin, and it would give them a clear path to Minas Tirith. It was very obvious that the Balkoth could not be allowed to conquer Kalinardon, but if Kirion would prevent that from happening, he would need help. Thus, his attention turned to the Aetheode, the descendants of the Northmen of Ravanian. Given the distance between Minas Tirith and Framsburg was almost a thousand miles, contact between the two peoples had been limited. Kirion knew that in 2501, Aeol the Young had become Lord of the Aetheode, after the premature, accidental death of his father, Laod. He knew that Aeol was courageous and was wise beyond his years, but beyond that, the two men had never actually had any correspondence. Kirion was relying on an ancient alliance that hadn't been relevant in about 500 years. In the year 2510, it was clear that the Balkoth were about to invade. In early March, Kirion called for volunteers and ended up choosing six riders of great courage and endurance. The plan was simple enough. The riders would learn a message by heart and deliver that message to Aeol, calling for him to help against the Balkoth. But even though the plan was simple, there was no ignoring the fact that this was almost a suicide mission. As I mentioned earlier, it was almost a thousand miles to Framsburg, Aeol's capital, and on top of that, the riders would have to cross the Undeeps into enemy-controlled territory. To increase the odds of success, these six riders were divided into three pairs, and each would leave a day after the other. On the 10th of March, the first pair left Minas Tirith. This was Borondir and his unnamed companion. Of Borondir, Apart from clearly being strong and courageous, all that we know about him is that he was an amazing horseman, which he claimed to be due to the fact that he was descended from a famous Northman captain who served the old kings of Gondor and ended up settling in Gondor. And that skill as a horseman served him well. Borondir and his companion managed to cross the Undeeps into hostile territory, but while passing Dol Guldur, Borondir's companion was slain by arrows during an ambush. Borondir managed to escape by fortune and the speed of his horse, but this was not the end of his trials. He was pursued as far north as the Gladden Fields, and was constantly forced off course when enemies would emerge from Mirkwood. Although this would delay his quest, more importantly, Borondir managed to stay alive, because unknown to him, he was the only rider that remained. The other four had also been killed or captured. On the 25th of March, Borondir finally made it to Aeol. He had ridden over a thousand miles in only 15 days. His last two days had been spent without food, and he was so exhausted that he could barely speak. Remember, he bore no physical message. But it was all worth it. It did not take long for Aeol to come to the conclusion 
that helping Gondor was in the best interest of the Aetheode. However, it would take a while to gather his people for war, as he wasn't planning on leaving many warriors behind. With 7,000 riders supported by several hundred mounted archers, this was an all or nothing expedition. The importance of Borondir's success becomes especially clear when we revisit what was happening further south. At some point shortly after Borondir's departure, Kirion gathered Gondor's army. At this point, Gondor's army was still using a north-south split, so it was the northern army that was under Kirion's command. By the time Kirion reached Kalanadon, the Balkoth had already crossed the river in great numbers and were in the process of ravaging the province. Battle was met on the plains of the Wold, and Kirion was cut off from the south and driven north across the river Limlight. On the 15th of April, disaster was imminent. Not only did the Balkoth pursue the Gondorians across the river, but whether by chance or through plan, an army of orcs from the Misty Mountains descended as well. With his back against the Anduin, it seemed that Kirion and his army were about to be destroyed. This was the Battle of the Fields of Celebrant. Of course, that's what would have happened if Borondir had not made it to Aeol. Instead, just as all hope was seemingly lost, the Aetheode arrived, smashing into the rear of the Orcs and the Balkov. The Orcs were destroyed or fled, and the remaining Balkov retreated southwards back into Kalanadon, where they were pursued and destroyed by the Aetheode. Although the threat would remain for years to come, the Balkov had been defeated for the time, but not without loss. The province of Kalanadon suffered greatly, and the Gondorians presumably took many casualties, but perhaps the greatest loss was Borondir himself. He had ridden back alongside Aeol and was the first to ride into battle. Sensing that Kirion was in danger, he made it to his lord, but was unfortunately cut down in his defence. For his part, Borondir was honoured greatly, at least in Gondor. A song was written about him called Rokon Mephestel, or Rider of Last Hope, where he was called Borondir Udalrath, or Borondir the Stirrupless, in reference to his ability to ride without stirrups. His body was interred in the hollows of Minas Tirith, usually reserved for kings, stewards, and other important men. While Borondir was none of these, he was a hero. I think to understand Borondir's impact, you need to think about what would have happened if he had failed. Even his success led to a very close call. If the Aetheode had arrived even a day later, then there would have been no Kirion no Gondorian army left to save. Perhaps the Aetheode still would have won the day, and perhaps the Balkov still would have been defeated, but it would have been a Peric victory at best. It just goes to show how important it was that Borondir was able to push through the exhaustion, the lack of food, and before that, how he was able to keep moving towards his goal, despite being driven off course by bands of attackers. And if Borondir had never even made it to Aeol, the Aetheode never even would have known about the battle taking place to the south. Kirion and his army would have been destroyed waiting for help that was never going to come. And what happens then? With Gondor's northern army gone, Kalanadon is free real estate for the Balkoth. And after they're done in Kalanadon, they could move east and south towards Gondor's heartland. The new steward, Halas, would have to siphon off forces from the Anduin frontier and the southern coast, meaning there's less defenders against Mordor and the Corsairs. In this scenario, it's entirely possible that Gondor collapses several hundred years before the War of the Ring. But that's not what happened. Borondir did make it to Aeol, and importantly, he made it to Aeol in time. Aeol and his army ended up at the right place at the right time to save Kirion and his army from certain disaster. And what did that lead to? Obviously, the continued survival of Gondor, but it also led to the establishment of Rohan, and the alliance between Gondor and Rohan would prove to be essential to the survival of both kingdoms in the years to come. So, what can we say about Borondir? Well, thanks to his courage, his perseverance, his skill, his horse, and of course his luck, he played a huge role in making sure the darkest timeline was avoided. Although there are many heroes throughout the history of Middle-earth, it's rare when one man alone has such a huge impact on the course of history. So if that's the case, then why is Borondir forgotten? Why is he not really spoken about? Within the tale itself, while Borondir did earn renown, he's more of a local hero, known in Gondor and perhaps in Rohan, but probably nowhere else. And unfortunately, the memories of men are short. Outside the tale, amongst the fanbase, well, it's a little easier. As far as I'm aware, he's only really mentioned in one story in the Unfinished Tales. So if you haven't read the Unfinished Tales, there's a good chance you never would have heard of him. 
You can even know the tale of the founding of Rohan from the appendices and Aeol's epic ride without knowing anything about the key man that made it all possible. So if this video does anything, I hope it makes you more aware of Borondir and his epic ride. And then, if you're up for it, perhaps you should thank him for the sacrifice he made. I'm just joking, he's a fictional character, don't be weird. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. If you want to know more about the Battle of the Field of Celebrant and the War with the Balkoff, I did a full video on it on my War in Middle-earth series. Sometimes my normal videos will cross paths with videos from that series, but I obviously do try and keep the focus different, so I'm not just recovering all the same territory. Cheers, farewell, and remember, if you've done something amazing, don't get yourself killed before you get your hero's welcome.